What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, so today we're going to be dealing with a 2008 BMW 750. Uh, had recently had valve cover gaskets and upper timing cover gaskets done. Uh, customer took the car and came back a couple days later uh, with a little bit of a rough idle like stumble on initial startup and then check engine light and the fault code that's stored in the car is 2A91. That fault code is for a exhaust camshaft bank to offset uh, to crankshaft. Um, there's a few things that could be. It could be a bad camshaft sensor. It could be a bad Vanos solenoid. It could be a bad Vanos adjustment unit on the front of the cam where the chain drives. It could have also jumped timing. So what we're going to start with for the diagnostic process is we're going to check and make sure that everything's plugged in properly. There is a possibility to switch up connectors for the cam sensors. We're going to make sure those are plugged in properly. Um, then we're probably going to switch cam sensors, see if the fault moves to intake instead of exhaust on bank two. If the fault moves, then obviously it's going to be in a cam sensor. Um, if it doesn't move, we're then going to swap the Vano solenoids. And if the fault moves with the Vano solenoids, then it's Vano solenoids. If it doesn't move with Vano solenoids, when you swap them, the next step is going to be to tear the everything back down and check timing to make sure timing's on. And if timing is actually on, it end up being a Vanos uh, gear on the camshaft. So we're gonna start with swapping over cam sensors and go from there. All right, so I just wanted to go over how to take this apart. Um, you have to take the microfilter housings out. They are just popped over top of this little uh, clip here. You just pull up on them, they snap off. They pull out of this intake hose here, or the, like the intake into the box in the car there. And then the, to get those intakes off, on the other side supposed to have it, but it doesn't. There is this clip here. It's like a when you screw it together, it pinches itself against the body down here and it goes up underneath here and sits here like this and it screws into the side of that air duct. You undo that and then back here against the back of the air duct where it meets the box going into the car, there's a little metal clip that goes across the top that you just pop up, pull the duct out. It's just kind of like a snap over clip. And then it's the same on the other side. The other side on this car is actually missing the little standoff with the screw into it that holds it on um then to get the cowl out there's a t30 on the back side that you get in from the back side this way on either side and then there's two 10 millimeters on each side that you take off and then that cowl pulls out uh take your engine cover off that's four tens take your uh engine cover your valve cover beauty cover over here off that pops off it's sitting on these two grommets back here and then i swapped the cam sensors over back here there is a, take those two connectors out, and then it is a E7 that holds both of those on. Undo the E7, work your cam position sensors out, swap them over, put them back in, put the E7s back in, put your connectors back on. Uh, I started the car back up, and the fault is still on bank two exhaust. So the next step is going to be tear apart the front of the motor and we're going to take the Vano solenoids and swap the Vano solenoids over and then see if the fault moves to the intake side. So let's get to it. Thank you. 
All right, so I got the uh, vano solenoids out. Um, I already put the one back in in the process of swapping them, but when you have them out, what you want to do is you want to inspect them and look for anything in this screen that's on these. Now, this one has some stuff in the screen. The other one had some stuff in the screen, too. I'm going to clean this out the best I can. Um, sometimes that stuff that's in the screen can actually get inside the valve in here and jam the valve up and cause the faults that you're having. So I'm going to try cleaning this screen out, but I think if it's still setting this fault, I'm probably going to start with putting Vano solenoids on and see if the fault goes away, and we're not going to we're not gonna check timing. But I think check timing might be something I just do just to cover my bases before I start, before I tell the customer it needs Vano solenoids. So we're going to see the fault comes back after cleaning this out. And if it doesn't, then we know that it was the Vano solenoid having some stuff stuck in it that was causing it. And we'll, you know, obviously quote Vano solenoid. So I'm going to put this back in and we're going to recheck and see if the fault's gone. All right, so taking the valve cover off on this car, not too crazy difficult. Um, little trick is if you have the ability to, it makes the job a lot easier. I don't, honestly, I don't even know if you can do it without doing this. Um, take your lower skid plate off and get a jack and jack the driver's side of the engine up. You're gonna wanna take your engine mount bolt, which is down through there. I'm gonna get a flashlight and show you guys. See where there's the bolt missing? That's actually the engine mount, and it's gonna be a, I believe a E12 or E10. Um, take that bolt out, jack your engine up, which will cause the engine to tilt this way, and get you the clearance around on this side in order to get your valve cover out. Now, in order to take it off, Valvetronic motor's gotta come off. There's a test plan with a scan tool that you're supposed to do while the engine is running that puts Valvetronic at minimum lift so that this motor isn't wound, or the eccentric shaft isn't wound up into a loaded position. You're supposed to do it. You don't have to do it. If you don't have access to a scan tool, you can obviously take this motor off without doing that. Just what you're gonna do is take three of the screws out, and then when you're taking the fourth screw out, holding the motor down, you're gonna hold some tension on it as it's coming up so that it doesn't strip out the, this block here because there's a lot of tension on that motor. You're gonna hold it down, take the last screw out all the way, and then slowly release it. And you're gonna hear it like ratchet and click inside of there. It's not a problem if you're only doing it every once in a while. If you do it repeatedly, you know, 10, 15 times, you can actually strip out the teeth on the essential shaft and the motor. But if you're just doing it once or twice, it's not gonna be that big of a deal. Once you get the motor off, you're gonna take this block off. This block has four T25s holding it down to the engine underneath the cover. Take the T25s out, pull the block out. There's an O-ring or a seal on this thing in the cover. Once you get that out, take your ignition coils out. There's a uh, E6 holding down these covers, or these little hold downs for the coils. And I was also incorrect before when I said those were E7s holding those uh, essential or the cam sensors in. Those are actually E6s as well. You're gonna take these hold downs for the coils out. The E6s out that hold the cam sensors in, the E6s that hold down this little seal that's on the eccentric shaft sensor where it comes through the valve cover off. Um, undo plug connection for that and for these, fold them up out of the way. Take your fuel line off. There's a clip on here that you have to take off. It just kind of pushes off here and then push in on this black ring here and then slide your fuel line off. Get that up out of the way. Pull your ignition coils out. This wiring harness here for the ignition coils actually unclips from the valve cover and can be like pulled over here like out of the way. And then you're gonna have a bunch of 10 millimeter screws around the perimeter in order to take the valve cover off. Do not forget that there is a 10 millimeter in the back in the middle. Um, if you forget to take that off and try to pry this valve cover off, you're gonna break the valve cover. Just, I've seen other people do it. Just take note of that. But there's four tens here in the middle part one ten in the back, and then four tens around the front here to take the cover off. 
there is spark plug tube seals in the middle here where the ignition coils are that sometimes can have a very tight grip on this valve cover and you're trying to take it off and sometimes when you pull the valve cover off they'll actually get stuck in the valve cover and keep you from having the clearance to get the valve cover off what you're gonna have to do is pick the valve cover off and reach in from underneath where you can see and pry them out of the valve cover so you can get the valve cover out um, they don't normally need to be replaced when you're doing valve cover gaskets or taking the valve cover off they have a little o-ring seal on either end of them and I've never really had a problem with them leaking after the fact so once you get your valve cover off I'll show you how to how we're gonna check timing All right, so got the valve cover off, uh, going to check timing. Uh, have a timing tool kit that I um, purchased. It's essentially my own timing tool kit. Um, the kit has a crank pin tool in it, and it goes in the, there's a hole in the timing cover, and there's a slot in the crank. You're going to turn your engine over at the crankshaft pulley until it gets to where the hole in the pulley lines up with the hole in the block, and you can slide your pin in. And then once your pin is in there, you're going to, take these blocks there's a there's two different blocks in the kit one's for the exhaust side one's for the intake side this is universal kit works for both sides you're going to take this block put it down over top of the slot on the cam and as long as it sits flush against the head that side's kind of hard to see but it's sitting down flush against the head as well as long as both of them sit flush against the head when you put it down then the engine is actually in time so that's the exhaust side and this is the intake side and as you can see it is in time that side is down as well um, the specification actually from BMW says that as long as this one is touching and this one is in within a half a millimeter of touching the cylinder head that it's in time. There's a slight gap with this one on there on the intake side, but it's not any more than a half a millimeter. I can feel a little bit of gap there with my finger, but it's not enough to be out of time. So engine's in time. So at this point, I'm going to assume that it's probably going to be bad vano solenoids. Like I said, I tried to clean those out the best I could, but there still could be stuff stuck inside of the, the valve part of the vano solenoid. So at this point, I'm going to recommend replacing vano solenoids to fix this problem. So we're going to get this valve cover put back together and quote vano solenoids. All right, so as you guys can see, uh, pulling the valve cover off of this is not too difficult. Uh, like I said, tricks, jacking the oil pan up uh, just to get your clearance full valve cover out of there. Uh, initially, diagnosing this fault, uh, 2A91, I swapped cam position sensors uh, and take an exhaust on bank two. Uh, fault did not change, it still came back for the exhaust being out of time. Uh, not out of time, but timing it reference is off. Um, Pulled vano solenoids out, found a little bit of debris in one of the vano solenoid screens, cleaned that out. It was actually the exhaust vano solenoid. Um, cleaned that out, swapped vano solenoids just because I was in there part of diagnostic purposes to see if the vano solenoid itself was bad, even though, you know, I cleaned the screen out. My fault did not come back after cleaning out the screen, so I believe that that is probably what was wrong with this. Um, just doing full... Uh, 
diagnosing, I still pulled the valve cover off to make sure timing was correct because timing being off could cause that fault to set as well. So I wanted to make sure that I was completely diagnosing everything properly. Uh, check timing, timing was on, nothing wrong there. So I believe that the van also is what's causing the problem. Uh, I'm, even though I cleaned them off and they're working now, there's a potential that there's still pieces of whatever was in that screen inside the bore of the vanosolin. The vanosolin has very tight tolerances. So if there's anything in there small enough to, you know, or big enough to block the valve from moving, it will cause that fault is that because that fault is for a camshaft adjustment for the exhaust side. So I'm going to recommend vanosolenoids. That should fix this problem completely. Uh, if this video helped you guys fix your fault code 2A91 on uh, N62, whether it be a 7 series, 6 series, 5 series, X5 or anything like that, uh, please like this video. Uh, if you have any questions, comment down below and I'll be sure to answer them. And I would really appreciate it if you guys could subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys later.